I live the van life, but not in a van. I live the van life in that, my Jeep. So I guess we can call it the Jeep life. So my Jeep, it's a 2015 Jeep Wrangler Sports Unlimited. It has a three and a half inch metal cloak lift and 37 inch tires. Yes, I got big tires. And this is my home. Now I know us YouTubers, I know we always make the van life look like it's the best thing in the world and really I mean it is to me it's better than living in a house I mean I get to live in all this right here this is my home but living in a Jeep does have its downs has its ups and downs and the ups they do outweigh the downs but I'm not gonna sugarcoat that this lifestyle is easy because it's not especially when you're doing it by yourself so this video is going to be those 10 top reasons why it sucks living in a Jeep and doing van life AKA Jeep life. So let's get into it. Little one, do you think it sucks? Do you think it sucks living in the Jeep? Do you <clears throat> love getting to look at this every single day? What do you think? Inquiring minds want to know. So, first thing, weather. Now I know that's an issue for everybody, even if you have a house and you live in a city and so on forth, but it's a little different for us when we're living this lifestyle. Because A, for example, we have to watch the weather constantly. We need to watch for rain, wind, storms, tornadoes, earthquakes. It all depends on where you're at. But for example, where I'm at right now, I am 33 miles up a mountain and I had to off-road up this mountain to get to this location right here. 33 miles. So meaning, if there was gonna be a storm or a bunch of rain and I was up here on this mountain, I'm not getting off until the roads are accessible for me to get off. Another reason we have to watch the weather is because, well, don't wanna be cooped up in our vehicles in our small little tiny space if it's gonna be raining for like four or five days straight because if I'm somewhere and it's storming it sucks being cooped up in that right there for days and days and days it's hard to cook just everything and then during the winter time we have to constantly watch the weather for snow depending on where we're at if that area gets snow and then the summertime, I don't want to be camping in the desert somewhere where it's a hundred and something degrees. So people that live this van life, I bet you they will tell you they watch the weather every single day. Cause I know I do. It's important for us travelers.
it's starting to get really windy up here but look at this beautiful freaking view high up on the mountain I mean I'm so high up I'm above some of those other mountains down there beautiful all right next thing campgrounds now I know I do a lot of free camping on public lands and when you do free camping on public lands you don't have to worry about this um, the only thing you really have to worry about is how you're gonna go to the bathroom electric if you need it and you know minor things like that but if you want to stay in an established campground and you live in your vehicle you might get turned away that's right you might get turned away there's a lot of campgrounds a lot of them now I'm not talking about state parks because I've never had an issue with state parks or national parks but the other campgrounds like privately owned campgrounds and you know campgrounds like that they don't like people to be sleeping in their vehicles so highly suggest if you live in your vehicle or even if you're camping in your vehicle and you want to stay in an actual campground you need to call that campground first and make sure that it's okay because they will turn you away once you get there um i guess the reason why they don't want people sleeping in their vehicles is because then they categorize that as you're homeless and i guess they think of homeless people as they'll leave a bunch of trash and it'll look bad i don't know so i suggest sticking with state parks or national parks or doing some of the free camping on public lands but if you have to stay in a campground call them first because you're going to be upset if you get there and they say do you have a tent or if you do have a tent i'll be honest with you just put your tent out and still sleep in your vehicle they'll never know they're not going to come check on you at midnight to make sure that you're sleeping in your tent so just buy you a cheap 20 dollars tent from walmart or amazon throw that bad boy on the ground and still sleep in your vehicle me if I go to a campground and they say no I'll sit there and argue with them and I'll leave if they won't let me sit, sit, sleep in my Jeep because they do let a lot of van people sleep in their vans and my Jeep is almost considered the same thing well this is a big one <laughs> not having the amenities yeah it sucks not having a flushing toilet or a running hot shower or an actual kitchen to cook in when it comes to us having to cook or go to the bathroom or take showers or any of that kind of stuff it's a little bit more difficult for us a little bit more difficult takes us longer and it's not as easy i do have a solar portable shower that i can just hook up right here and take a shower right now if i wanted to I do have a toilet that I could sit on with biodegradable bags that I put in there. Or, I know some of you guys feel funny about doing this. When you're out in nature like this, just take your shovel, dig a hole, a deep hole, and use that as your toilet, the hole, and then cover it up after you're done. And then I do have a full kitchen. It's just I gotta pull my stove out, hook the propane up to it. 
it's a little bit more difficult than people that live in a normal house and then not have an AC and heat you know obviously I have AC and heat in the Jeep but when the Jeep's not turned on I'm not driving I don't use the AC and heat so that's a big thing that sucks is not having the AC and the heat and I actually have a harder time during the summertime not being able to have AC in some of these places winter I've worked through it because I have an electric blanket and a really big sleeping bag so so yeah the amenities I definitely miss having those that flushing toilet in the running hot shower now when I want to take a shower to set up my shower I either a I have to put the bag out in the Sun with the water in it and let the Sun heat it up which I don't have the patience for that when I want to take a shower I'm ready to take a shower so I take water and I boil the water and put it in the bag and then put regular water on top of it so it's not scolding hot and then take a shower so amenities for all you people that live in a house enjoy those amenities look at that look at that yep all that Dirt and dirt the dirt 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 keeping my Jeep clean. That's the most freaking difficult thing ever, especially since I go on all these dirt roads and uh <laughs> that should have been my number one keeping the Jeep clean I don't know what it is about Jeeps but when you go down dirt roads and everything you can have all your windows rolled up but that dirt's still gonna fly inside your Jeep point being you guys saw how dirty the top of my fridge was I cleaned my Jeep out yesterday. I wiped, I, I have Lysol up here. Those are Lysol disinfectant wipes up there. So I took them and I wiped down my fridge, my dashboard. I even Windexed all my mirrors, um, shook out my, my sleeping bag, wiped down my drawers over there. I just did that yesterday. But because I just went and drove around this mountain a little bit with the windows rolled up. All the dirt flew into my Jeep. So I am constantly cleaning my Jeep. I spring clean my Jeep. And when I say spring clean my Jeep, I mean, I take everything out of this Jeep um, and start fresh and put it all back in. And wipe everything down I do that probably about once every two to three weeks and that's a pain in the butt having to pull everything out of that Jeep right there but as far as like wiping everything down and everything I probably do that about twice a week it all depends also on how many dirt roads I've gone down and so on forth and you know so if I'm just driving on pavement for that day I mean for that week then I could go about once a week, you know, as long as I don't take any dirt roads. But keeping this tiny little space right there clean is so freaking difficult, especially when you have somebody that has OCD. Me. <laughs> so, I mean, as you guys can see, I try to keep everything organized in there and everything. I mean, I don't want to be sleeping in this bed in this small little tiny space breathing in dirt so that's the most difficult thing is trying to keep this freaking space the inside of my jeep clean Having 
a tiny space. That sucks. <laughs> well, let's see. I can't sit up in my Jeep. I got some stuff right here. But over there, I can sit up in my Jeep. There is no room whatsoever in this Jeep. None. When I sit up in my Jeep over here, my head barely fits. So, that sucks. <laughs> but I'll be honest with you, when I get to places, I get out of my Jeep and I hang out outside. I'm not inside all the time because it sucks being cooped up inside this Jeep and that goes with the bad weather. Yeah. I mean, this is smaller than a studio in po uh, apartment. <laughs> Space sucks. And I'm not just talking about the space for me to hang out inside of it. I'm talking about the space for me to have stuff to store things and everything. I'm in the process of cleaning out my Jeep right now, but normally I have two slide out drawers that go down here. So I have the slide out drawers. I have the storage bags, four of them inside my Jeep that go on my roll bars. And I have the two hard cases on top. Everything I own is in this Jeep. So, can't buy anything else because I don't have room for it. Let's go over here. Mail and shipping. Yeah, that's a difficult one. Where to receive mail. Shipping things off, because where I'm at right now, I'm probably about a good two hours away from an actual town right now. So, and nine times out of 10, I stay away from cities. So if I need to go mail something off or return something or ship something or anything like that, then I'm gonna have to do a detour on my travels just to go find a city to go do that. And as far as mail goes, us nomad people, we don't have a permanent address. Nature is our address. This is our address. So trying to figure out where to get mail when you're on the road full time, that's difficult. Right now I have a PO box in Texas that my aunt checks for me. And so about once a month, everything I receive in that PO box, oh, the wind is getting bad. Everything I receive in that PO box, she'll ship it off to me to a campground or a hip camp place that I'm at somewhere so I can receive it. And then I tried the general delivery at the post offices because they say that you can do that. I tried it twice and both times, two times, they lost my package. So I'll never try that again. So if I absolutely need something shipped to me, like my fridge broke one time and I had to get a new fridge. Um, I'll go to a campground, preferably a hip camp. And nine times out of 10, if you ask them, hey, can I have something mailed here? They'll say yes. So it's a pain in the butt having to do that. Can you say hi to everybody? Can you say hi? 
See, this next part is going to be about me. See, the next part is going to be about me. Yes. Oh, yes. All about you. You are a cute little thing. Who's a cute girl? Are you a cute girl? Yes, you are. And that brings me to this one. We all know how I feel about my little one here. She's my heart and soul. And I would not give up anything in the world for her. Not even a million dollars. Well, maybe if somebody offered me a million dollars for her, I'd take the million dollars, but then I'd go back and rob them for her. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but living this life and living in the Jeep and traveling around to all these places while living in the Jeep. There's certain things I cannot do having a dog. That's right. She holds me up from doing certain things, but I don't mind because I love her. So I get a lot of people asking, how come I don't go to hot springs? And I'm sure it's because you guys just won't see me in a bathing suit. Just kidding. <laughs> or not. <laughs> but I can't go to hot springs because of her. I can't take my dog to a hot spring. I can't leave her in the Jeep. I'm not going to leave my dog in a Jeep while I go and enjoy something for myself for like an hour or so. I'm just not doing it. So I think that's horrible. Uh, grocery shopping. She's not a service dog, so I don't like taking her into grocery stores. I have. I've done it before, but it's a task trying to take her into a grocery store. And preferably, I know these places don't want you bringing your dogs into the public places and everything unless they're a service dog. So I order my groceries online, and I just go and pick them up in curbside. So going to any stores or anything like that and then some parks there's some state parks that don't allow dogs some campgrounds don't allow dogs um a lot of national parks they don't allow dogs on the trails because of the wildlife so when i was up in the pacific northwest last year for three months Every trail out there, almost everywhere I went, in Oregon, Washington, and Idaho, and even in Montana, they didn't allow dogs on the trails. And that was because of the wildlife. I get it. So, it's difficult living in the Jeep or living in a vehicle, just traveling, period, when you have an animal. A pet if I had an RV it'd be different I could leave her in the RV and go and do these things but it's different when you have a small vehicle like this so that's another thing that sucks That's my home. I travel full time. So meaning, I'm going to a lot of places, putting a lot of miles on that Jeep. So meaning wear and tear. That's a big thing that sucks. Is putting the wear and tear on your vehicle. I'm probably putting more wear and tear on this Jeep than I did in my rock crawling days when I used to rock crawl with her. I take it very easy in my Jeep. I don't go over 65 miles per hour, so I don't gun it. I don't do crazy rock crawling stuff or technical trails. 
but just coming up this mountain that I'm on right now, it was a 4,000 feet elevation gain coming up this mountain. So meaning I was going up in a lot of spots. Just putting all the miles on my Jeep is the wear and tear. So we put more wear and tear on our vehicles than a normal person would. Even a normal person driving their vehicle every single day. I mean, last year alone, I put 33,000 miles on my Jeep. I tell you one thing, if you live this lifestyle, the main thing you need to always check and keep up with is your oil. Always keep up with that oil change. So yeah, the wear and tear. That's why I spend a lot of money on my tires. Those tires right there are $500 each. That's $2,000 worth of tires. Because my spare tire, I didn't pay $500 for my spare tire. Just not going to do it. It's a freaking spare. I got this for like $40. <laughs> so. But I spent a lot of money on the best tires. Because they last longer. You spend money towards something then it's gonna last longer. And that's an important thing is those tires. Because well, I can't get to all these places and I can't drive my Jeep with horrible tires. So thank goodness the tires last me for a while. And I off-road, I drive on the interstate. I put 33,000 miles on my Jeep last year. So yeah, the wear and tear. Okay, it's gonna be a loud, bumpy ride. Because my Jeep is loud. But, the last one is definitely gonna be loneliness. That's right. I know I act like I don't get lonely out here on these roads and doing what I do and living in my Jeep and traveling around and living in nature. But I do. I get lonely every once in a while. It's nice to have this peace and quiet by myself and be able to enjoy all these beautiful places by myself and take it in but when you do it for so long you get lonely after a while so even though I act like loneliness isn't an issue for me realistically it is an issue sometimes for me so yeah loneliness. It'd be nice to be able to meet some people to caravan with every once in a while. It'd be nice to meet up with people like every few months. Thank God I have a dog. <laughs> So although I have a big list of things that suck living in that Jeep down there and living this lifestyle, but do I regret it? No. Not at all. Not when I get to go live in that right there full time.
just being able to enjoy this and live in this and not the busy city is well worth it. Living this lifestyle has helped me tremendously. I'm happy. I'm the happiest I've ever been in my whole entire life. Even through all the struggles that I have on the road, living in my Jeep. But when I wake up and I'm in this every single day, I can deal with those struggles because my happiness and my mental self-being is a lot more important and having that peace. I mean, just listen. No cars, no honking horns, no people talking, no yelling, no screaming, just peace. You just hear the birds and the wind and nature. I'll take a hundred struggles in this life just to be able to have that. 